This video is the foundation of our async JavaScript interview series. In just one video, I'll take you through everything that you will need to solve any async JS interview question, starting from timers to all the way to JavaScript internals. We will do a quick and powerful revision of all the async concepts, but make sure you already have basic JavaScript knowledge so you'll get the most benefit from this video. So let's get started. Let's start with how JavaScript works internally. So as you all know or you may have heard that JavaScript is a single threaded language. What does it mean? So JavaScript runs on single thread. If you see other backend languages like Java or Python, they have multi-threaded architecture. But in JavaScript, it runs on a single thread. That thread is called main thread or main thread. So thread you can say it's a set of instructions to CPU. So it is working on the main thread or single thread. That means JavaScript can work on single task at a time, single task at a time. Then how JavaScript handles the async operations. You can hit a API and at the same time the other API can be hit and both works parallelly. So how that happens? So that happens asynchronously, right? For asynchronous working of JavaScript, what JavaScript has internally so that it can work asynchronously on single thread that we are going to see in this section suppose javascript is a chef javascript is a chef this chef can make only one dish at a time one dish at a time so that means javascript is single threaded right one dish at a time means single threaded but now the requirement is we should cook multiple dishes at same time so how can we do that we have single kitchen correct we have single kitchen but in single kitchen we have multiple cooktops cooktops means they are burners on which we cook the food one waiter comes goes to table one and takes the order and it returns it to the kitchen so table one needs three items so the waiter will add these three items in a queue and the kitchen will read that queue and will start preparing the dishes as they have multiple cooktops so while this is cooking the waiter is free now correct he'll go to table number two and read the orders and again will place in the queue in the same queue and the kitchen will read these values one by one and will try to cook it whenever this cooktop or burner is free so this is how javascript will handle multiple requests by keeping them in a queue prioritizing them based on how much time they require and will execute them so you must be getting some idea that how waiters are putting items in the queue and the kitchen is reading them and whenever the burner is free the cook is cooking based on that so just like that we'll see how javascript works internally now consider javascript kitchen is the call stack it is called call stack in which the functions are executed the javascript functions are executed this is synchronous this is going by order that means it is synchronous but you have to work asynchronously for that we have two types of queues the first is called macro task queue and the second is called micro task queue. this micro task queue has higher priority this has priority one and this has two so it has higher priority so there is a concept called event loop event loop what is the work of this event loop it's just a program this event loop is just a program but the task of this event loop is very much important the task of event loop is whenever this call stack becomes empty this is empty now because it doesn't have any function to be executed so in that case it will pick the tasks from the micro task queue first as it has priority as one correct it will pick the tasks one by one and will keep in the call stack when this one completes it will get out of the call stack then the second will be entered in here then the third whenever this micro task queue becomes empty the event loop will pick tasks from macro task and will put into the call stack so now macro tasks are added to the call stack so the flow is the event loop will see if the call stack is empty it will add tasks from macro task to the call stack and once the micro task queue is empty it will look for the macro task and macro task will be added to the call stack at the last but what are these micro tasks Okay, but what are these micro tasks? So suppose there are, there is a promise. So we are gonna see what promise is. So suppose there is a API call, API call. We have some callbacks. So these callbacks are nothing but the functions that we are gonna see in the next section that we have to run when the API call is succeeded or failed. So these tasks are nothing but these callbacks. 
So these tasks are nothing but the callbacks. In macro tasks as well, the tasks are nothing but the callbacks. These are kind of the completion callbacks of any, any asynchronous task. So these are nothing but the functions that will go eventually in the call stack and they are the completion callbacks of the async operations. So I hope you have got some good understanding of event loop and basic concepts like micro task and macro task queue. So let's head over to the next section. Let's talk about timers. So we have two types of timers. They are not basically part of JavaScript, but they are provided by the runtime of JavaScript, like V8 in this case, or browser. Browser is providing these kind of timer APIs. In case of Node.js, Node.js provides these timers. In Node.js, there are multiple actually. Process.nextTick is there, set immediate is there. But in this section, we are going to talk about set timeout and set interval. So one good example of set timeouts, again, we'll take the kitchen analogy. Suppose you go to a pizza shop and there you place the order you get the token so your token number is 135 and the expected time is five minutes you go to kitchen after five minutes and check if your order is completed or not this set timeout is pretty similar this set timeout schedules one time execution after the specified time that time you can decide what time you have to give you go to the kitchen one time after five minutes and you get your pizza that's about set timeout but this set interval the name itself suggests it is interval so it is doing something after interval by interval like one two and it will go to three like four five this is kind of an interval set interval about scheduling a task which will happen after some interval repeatedly here it is repetitive repetitive but this is one time that is the difference between set interval and set timer let's see in the code how we can do this suppose you have a function collect pizza you have the collect pizza this will basically log console.log it says pizza collected so this is a function we have to execute this collect pizza after three seconds for that we can use set timeout set timeout and here the first parameter we have to give the function so here one thing to note we have to give the function the name of the function and not execute it the correct use is collect pizza and we should not call that function oh, this is very important if you call this function this will not take the reference of the function but instead it will execute it immediately but we want to execute it after some time so that's why we have to give, just give the name of the function and here pass the time in the milliseconds so we have to collect the pizza after three seconds just run this one two three it will take three seconds and it will then execute this after three seconds i have collected the pizza that's how the set timeout takes this much time to execute this function this is about set timeout let's talk about set interval so suppose for waiter he has to collect a new pizza every three seconds in that case what we can do set interval in this also we have to pass the function again here we'll pass the time as three seconds and we'll run this let's see this now so every three seconds you are getting pizza collected so this is set interval this is coming from set interval every three seconds we are running that function again and again so this is about set interval so how can we clear this both set timeout and set interval return a id they both return an id so we can use this id to clear the set timeout there is a built-in method called clear timeout in that if we pass this id this this set timeout will be cleared in this case if i run it it will not print it because whenever I am scheduling this, soon after I am clearing the timer. That's why it, it didn't print it. And similar to this set interval also has some ID like that we can use to clear the interval using clear interval. So this is about the timers. Let's head over to the next section. Let's learn callbacks in this section. What are callbacks? The name itself suggests callback. We are calling it after some time. Callback sometimes callbacks are nothing but functions so they are nothing but regular functions it can be arrow or regular functions but they are passed as a parameter to another function suppose you have a function one function that function will take some input and will return some output these inputs are nothing but we call parameters of the function suppose you have a sum function so a and b are the parameters and we return a plus b a plus b 
so this a and b are called parameters when this parameter or one of the parameters is a function and that will be called inside this function then that is called as a callback i'll give one example here in the earlier section we use set timeout set timeout the first argument we gave is name of the function name or reference of the function and we have given the time this name or reference is nothing but a callback so we are providing a callback here and the set timeout will internally run this callback after this time this callback is nothing but a function that function is passed as a parameter to another function let's write two function here one is sum one is sum it will take two parameters a and b and will return the sum of it and let's write some another function that is mult that that will do basically the multiplication of the numbers that we provided and we do a into b for multiplication so these are two functions we have to create a one function const lq and here we have to pass three parameters basically we'll pass a and b and the third parameter will be what operation we have to do uh, with these two numbers this will be a callback and uh, you can call it whatever you can call it cb or callback it's up to you i'll call it callback and let's return let's return what we will return we'll do the operation between this based on the provided callback we'll pass callback and we'll pass the a and b to this what we are doing we are taking in this calculate function we are taking a and b and we are passing some callback and whatever callback we are putting it here it will process this data based on that in in this if we just console log calculate will execute this function in this we'll pass a as 12 b as 25 and we'll We'll pass sum as a callback here and we'll run it let's see we got the sum what is happening here this 12 will go to a this 25 will go to b and this sum will go to callback this sum will be executed here and this this will process the a and b that we are providing here so this sum is a callback this sum is a callback we are passing an another function to this function as a parameter this is the example of callback let's try another one here we'll pass mult this mult will execute and it will process these two numbers as a multiplication this will be executed at this place a will be 12 b will be 25 and this callback will be mult and this statement will be run this is how callbacks work there is a term called callback hell what is callback hell we were passing this callback here but this callback can also accept some another callback this callback will go to this and here that callback will be executed and the past callback can also expect some another callback this will create a chain this will create a chain and it will create the code very complex it will reduce the readability this is called callback hell that's a very popular problem that you should understand promises are backbone of asynchronous javascript whenever the asynchronous javascript is there so promises what is a promise consider the pizza shop example again so this is a pizza shop i will not name the brand but yeah this pizza shop promises that we will deliver in 30 minutes we will deliver the result in 30 minutes this is a promise to us this is a promise to the user that we will deliver in 30 minutes what are the possible scenarios here the default state is pending if you order it this is still in the pending state the promise is still in the pending state once the pizza is prepared and it is delivered this promise will go into fulfill state fulfilled due to rain or traffic or due to unavailability of uh, the ingredients they fail to deliver in 30 minutes this promise will go into rejected state promise is nothing but the same thing it's a javascript object which has pending fulfilled and rejected state and it has capability to respond in fulfilled and rejected state after some time so it handles the asynchronous operations that is how promises help us to handle the asynchronous behavior let me show you how it works in the real world suppose you have to call one user's api users you have to call the user's api and you will use the fetch api this fetch api will call the server and the server will process your request and will return this is taking some time this means this is async this is async the server is taking some time once the server is ready with the data that it has to respond with it will respond it to the ui in this case if the request is successful this promise will be fulfilled this promise will be fulfilled 
otherwise it will go to rejected so in full field what we will get we will get the data in the rejected what we will get we will get the error that why it was rejected that's how the promises works let's see using the code as i said promise is an object let's create a promise it's an object so it's an object of promise class so let's write promise and it has one executor function so this executor function is a callback again we are passing it to a function that means it's a callback we are passing resolve and reject as a parameters so both resolve and reject are the callbacks that we will call in this executor function will write some async code here the asynchronous processing will happen that can take like three minutes just example asynchronous thing that that can take three minutes for example if that async thing is successful in that case we'll get some data right we'll resolve that data resolve and data if that asynchronous operation is failed in that case we'll reject with error will reject with error correct this is how resolve will be called when the operation is successful or reject will be called when there is the, the operation is unsuccessful and will reject with the error how to consume this for that we can use promise object that we created promise dot then promise dot then whatever we are getting data right whatever we are passing it here that we will get here in the then we will pass one callback and we can use this callback whenever the promise is resolved whatever callback we are passing it here it will act as resolve and just like that for reject we can use dot catch for reject we can use dot catch in this reject we are passing error that's why we will get error here and we'll log it for now whatever we are passing in the catch will act as reject whatever we are passing in then will act as resolve and you have to do a sync operation here and this is how we can read the successful that is full filled and rejected state of the promise this is a bit complex but it is good if you understand it if you don't understand it just rewatch this video again and you will get it for sure and just like we had the callback hill in promises also there is a problem that is called promise chaining suppose this then has this callback okay and this callback also returns a promise this the callback that is returning the promise that promise can also return another promise this is called promise chaining so this again creates readable issues and this is very hard to maintain code for that we have a new thing in market what's that new thing we'll see in the next section let's talk about async and await so why async and await introduced in the javascript and what problems they solve okay so async await is a syntactic sugar to promises async await is not a new concept it is not a new concept it is using the promises itself so if we are using async and await in the end we are using promises how we are using promises in using async and await async await solves the problem of promise chaining just like we are running synchronous code synchronous code how synchronous code runs suppose you have one variable const a equals to 15 and you have another variable const b equals to 25 this code runs line by line but in case of asynchronous it was not running line by line it was going deeper and deeper but async await code runs like a synchronous code like in this line it will run, run line by line and without this line of code is not run it will not go to another line it is running asynchronous code just like asynchronous code let's see how it works in the code we have seen this example in the last section while running how we can use async await here for using async await we'll need a function a function can be async and whenever we have to use await that function must be async we can use async function or we can call it run promise so as we have declared this function as async we can use await here what we will do const data equals to await promise so this is how we can use async await here this is very easy right suppose this then returns one another promise and the returned promise can also return another promise in that case we can have multiple data here const suppose this data is also a promise because it is returned from this promise we can call it data to await data and we can have a uh, const data 3 that is written from data to promise data 2 this code will run like a synchronous code like it is running line by line this line number 12 will not be executed unless until line number 1 is finished what will happen if this promise is rejected will it go to the promise like the next data or data to promise no for that we can use try catch here try and catch error in async await we don't have the catch block like dot catch here we have dot catch in async await we have to use try catch in this we can handle the error code
code and uh, we can put the main code in the try block and we can put the main code in the try block this is how a sync await works the synchronous JavaScript is the backbone of every React, Node and front-end interview. If you master these concepts, from callbacks to async await, you will never get confused in the async coding questions again. This video is just the foundation for our async JS interview question series. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. Hit like, share with your friends and subscribe. That's it for today. Bye-bye.